ha! It was actually my idea. <laughs> well, it's not very clever. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. We open up. We're a month from extermination day, and Charlie is losing her mind. She has not been able to redeem Angel yet. Maybe it's time no. to ask. Don't say it. Your dad. <sighs> What's the holdup? You got daddy issues. They finally get her to call her dad. We get some breakdown in their relationship, which is kind of weird because. Both of them seem like neither one wants anything to do with him. Lucifer thinks Charlie doesn't want anything to do with him, and she thinks Lucifer doesn't want anything to do with her. So it's kind of weird. And I was coping for more and from Lucifer than a broken man locked in his room making rubber ducks. The magic testicle backflipping rubber duck. <laughs> that spits fire. Just their interactions in this episode leave a lot of questions. But basically, Charlie asks to see the manager of heaven. I need to see the manager. So I need to speak to heaven. Well, whoever's in charge up there, above Adam, above anybody, I need to go to the top. Lucifer comes to the has Hotel, and once him and Alistair meet, they really get off on the wrong foot. I don't like you either. Alistair is cocky. Doesn't seem to mind making Lucifer mad. Like I said, more questions... It seems like Alistair has a beef with Lucifer for some reason. Alistair, pleasure to be meeting you, sir. Quite a pleasure. It's nice to finally put a face to the name. You are much shorter in real life. Uh, they get into an argument, end up in a song. It's kind of fun. It's very swing type. Goes back and forth with Charlie stuck in the middle. And then Mimsy shows up, one of Alistair's friends. I kind of get the idea she's supposed to be a demonic Betty Boop type character. Mimsy offers our friends some backstory on Alistair, the breakdown of how he came in, how he became the radio demon, and how he came to be a threat. Happened to him until these strange radio broadcasts started going out. All you could hear was screams. We get to the most intriguing part of this episode. Husk and Alistair's conversation. We find out that Alistair is on a chain himself, just like Husk and Angel Dust. You may own my soul, but I ain't your fucking pet. <laughs> but you are. <laughs> Big talk for someone who's also on a leash. If you ever say that again, I will tear your soul apart and broadcast your screams for every other disrespectful wretch who dares to question me. This leaves a lot of questions. Lucifer, during this time, reveals to Charlie that he doesn't want her to get hurt like he was. He's also convinced no one in hell is redeemable and they're all evil. They're not worth putting your neck on the line for. When Mimsy's trouble finally shows up, we get to see Alistair show some strength and show why he's so feared. Yeah! Oh! I will devour each and every one of you! He then proceeds to show Mimsy out the door because she brought trouble to the doorstep of the has Hotel, and she's not worried about redeeming herself. I mean it. You deliberately brought danger to this place just to have me clean up your mess. I can't have that here. You are welcome if you actually want to give redemption a shot. But I think we both know that's not really your style. And we got to remember, his whole deal was hanging around so that he could watch everyone fail. That's how he got his kicks. Now the role has changed. Like I said, lots of questions. Lucifer and Charlie end up in a song. It's cute. It's one of Charlie's better songs, but there is a little mix up with the sync. I think I think they're off a little bit. It doesn't blend 100% perfectly. It's still fine. I still enjoyed it. It's better one of her songs, but you have to pay attention to one scene in this where she's bonding with Lucifer as a child and Lilith takes her away. Like I said, we'll cover that at the end. But Lucifer finally decides to help her out and get her a meeting with heaven. And that is the end of the episode. You ready? I'm ready. Because you'll be with me. In spirit, right? In heaven. Yay. As we open up to Charlie packing. Nah, I always hated traveling with a woman. This is exactly how it is. Who starts this scene really off coming home from a hard day at work with Val. You know what kind of work he does. It's who happened to me. And the answer is everyone. Twice. Val had me working 16 hours straight on a fucking whim. 
we get introduced to one of his friends, Cherry Bomb, who Charlie convinces to take everyone out for a night on the town while they go to heaven. Responsible night on the town! That is a great idea! Hi, Charlie! That's my wall that you just blew up. This could be really bad. This could be really good. Charlie and Veggie show up at the pearly gates. This is hilarious. Charlie Morningstar. Charlie Morningstar. Hmm. Doesn't add up. Oh, really? Um, my dad got me this meeting, so maybe oh, dad. try okay. Lucifer Morningstar. Oh, fuck. I really enjoyed this scene. And we get to meet the angel version of Charlie. He enter into a song about heaven. It really feels like a boy band song. It's not my speed. It's done well. I will say that. It's just not my cup of tea. Some people probably enjoyed it. It was kind of cute, but like I said, not my, not my speed. We also learned that once Adam sees Charlie, no one is supposed to know about the exterminations of hell. How did she even get up here? Who cares? I'm handling this shit right now! Wait! What was the Seraphim's one rule? Uh, no one but the exorcist can know about the exterminations. I know, fine. We get a huge plot twist with Adam revealing to Vaggi that she is an angel and she was killing thousands of demons in hell when she refused to and they took her wings. Hey there, Vagisaurus! We're on the front lines. I wouldn't forget a bad bitch like you. It's why I named you after the best thing ever. Vaggie. Now, my only problem with this scene is Vaggie didn't seem to know anything about this. So I don't think she was playing it off. It just seemed like she was very shocked to find this out. Uh, I think they could have played it a little better if they wanted to just make it where she was trying to hide it. But to me, it felt like she didn't even remember. And I just don't think that worked. We end up in court and they try to set the rules up to get into heaven. Be selfless. Don't steal and stick it to the man. Act selfless, don't steal, stick it to the man. Are you fucking serious? Uh, yeah, sure got me here, didn't it? <laughs> right, Sarah? What a dick. This is what Adam comes up with. Remember, he's supposedly the first soul in heaven, which actually doesn't work out right. So they check in with Angel Dust at a sex dungeon with Cherry Bomb, and she's trying to derail him. Are you really telling me you've never had a drink with friends at the end of a hard day? Uh, we don't have hard days. It's fucking heaven, bitch. Hey, shot, 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 shot. Now, I will say the funniest thing out of this whole scenario with Angel Dust in the sex dungeon is Serpentus. This dude had me rolling. I, I'd like to buy you a drink. Why? Didn't you say we're arch rivals? Uh, um, uh, because I'm buying everyone a drink. Cherry, I bought you a shot. Because I bought everyone another shot. Do I have poor self-esteem? I'm sorry. Why would we have sex? Ah, uh, ah, uh, um, because I'm having sex with everyone here. <laughs> Angel finally stands up to Val after stopping Nifty from stealing. He has completed all things on the list and is still not redeemed and in heaven. He was selfless. He stopped Nifty from stealing, and he stuck it to that Mothman. Uh, this causes some argument in heaven, and we start to get into a song with the angels and Charlie. I thought was done well. It reminded me of anime, although it did speed up sometimes, and change, it changed pace multiple times in the song, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, this is probably the best of all of Charlie's songs. We end up with M and Charlie singing against heaven because nobody knows what's going on. We have Adam revealing to everyone about the extermination, Vaggie's past, and that he's coming to the hotel on extermination day first. A lot of things transpire in this song. There's a lot of high notes, low notes, and a lot of shock. My one takeaway from this is there's no divine being watching over heaven. Just like Lucifer is not watching over hell, he's stuck in his room making rubber ducks. Charlie gets sent back to hell. The angels talk amongst themselves. They still have no idea what's going on. M promises she won't give up on Charlie. End episode. So for the questions and theories on these two episodes, if Alistair is so powerful, he does not fear Lucifer. Not that he's that fear-inducing. How powerful is the person holding his chain? 
Now, we know that Alistair's been gone for seven years, the same amount of time Lilith has, who is probably holding his chain. Will this be something we get to see in the next two episodes? Did Lilith take the most powerful overlords and hide them, just like Alistair and her are hidden, so that Charlie would have a chance at redeeming some souls to help her daughter realize her dream? Once again, something we don't really need to get into until next season. We are going to need some follow-up over the next two episodes over the exterminations. We're going to have to see Extermination Day and them showing up at the hotel. Now, how is the weapon demon that killed the angel going to play into this? Alistair knows about her. There's a lot of things that have been set in place and it needs to start tying up. And one of my biggest questions here is why was Lilith taking Charlie from Lucifer when they were having a bonding moment, she always said it seemed like her father was distanced, but it just seemed like she needed to be around him. Uh, this reminds me of a bad divorce. That's exactly what this reminds me of. So you got to remember, Lucifer doesn't think Charlie wants anything to do with him, and Charlie thinks Lucifer doesn't want anything to do with him. So it's a big issue here, and that just sounds like a bad divorce, especially when you see certain things and you hear certain things from the characters. Now that we have a lot of stuff to go through in the next two episodes to get some sort of fulfillment for this entire episode. I feel like these were decent episodes. They were fun. I would say at the least they were fun. We didn't have the huge message that was in four that was very heart touching and heart crushing at the same time. We are starting to see that pay off with Angel Dust. But we're still getting too many questions, not enough answers. We have two more episodes left in this series. And I really hope it's not stuck on a huge cliffhanger where you have to wait a year to find out what's going to happen. We need, we need some stuff resolved in the next two episodes, or I don't think it's going to get a better rating from me. I do like the show. I do think it's fun. I do like the songs, even though I'm not a huge musical person. I think it works well with this. I did like the veggie plot twist. I thought that was interesting. I knew there was something up with her, but I couldn't put my hand on it. I knew she was not normal or she had to be a soldier or something in a previous life. There had to be something different about her than the rest of these demons. Well, and now we know. So I enjoyed that. I thought it was fun. It was an interesting take. As of right now, the series is still a six out of 10. It's, above average it's fun to watch it plays with your mind a little bit it has you intrigued and honestly it's been fun to go to work and talk to my coworker next to me about things that happen in this show and what's going to be next and our thoughts in it not trying to make up things in our head to make the episodes work which like i said before that is something we haven't been getting lately you have to make up something in your head for the episode to work black girl magic we're completely like spitballing over what's going to be in the next episode and what did this mean in this episode for the future episodes call me dick master other than that i'm looking to be bad share sub do all that good stuff and you have a good one